Hello again, folks. It's James Cummings, half assed reporter. And we're in Chelsea, 526 West 26th Street. We're going to run upstairs and try to catch a show. It's about 10 minutes before closing time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're going to run in here to the SFA projects. Try to catch some pictures of the show. Time Circle by the Benjamins, Pritchard and LaRocca. Interesting. I, uh, I've known both Ben's for probably about 15 or 20 years. It's all about the Benjamins here. We let we let the crowd clear out. Why did you call the show that? Benjamin Pritchard. That's so cheap. <laughs> Benjamin Pritchard and Ben LaRocca. Uh, well, beautiful show, gentlemen. Uh, we'll just kind of skim around here. These guys are uh, waiting to get over to the after party. Why don't you come with me? We'll talk a little bit about some of the paintings. Let's start here. This is one of Ben Pritchard's pieces. Give us a little... Uh, uh, it's called C. Talk. Um, is this oil paint? It is all oil paint on surfaces that I usually find or come across and just develop over time, long periods of time. So how long would you work on something? Keep long, long, well, who knows? They come together. Rolling really around in the studio. In the studio is just kind of a morass of, of behavior. Um, but when they finish, then they, they yeah, become right, themselves. Right. And what are you mixing with the oil paint? Has that got some uh, liquid this, in there? That's actually aluminum. Stand oil? Okay. And um, the ground up aluminum, and then this is just cobalt blue. I'm obsessed right. with cobalt blue. Right. Right. Yeah, I love that color mm -hmm. at the moment. So I make it all Beautiful. and just like work with these things until they, they yeah, are right. right. time size. Right. Now we're going to snag the other bend for a minute here. <laughs> Let's look at this piece. <laughs> We were talking and you said that you'd been working on these pieces for a decade and that, uh, <laughs> well, that, uh, well, when you Dor say that way, it sounds Dorothy like, it sounds like labor. <laughs> okay. But you were also, you were a student, studio assistant for Dor Dorothea Rockburn, was that? Yes, and these and paintings started, oh, yeah. really? they started during that time, but they finished just recently. So they are the lockers old girlfriend. And, uh, so you restretched these and glued them onto other canvases and structured them again. How much, when you were doing the reworking, how much did you, would you redo on there? It's not redoing, it's like cumulative. It's cumulative. Okay. Everything's preserved. Let's look at this piece by the other Ben. Do we have a title for this? Uh, well, that painting's about, actually a painting I saw of Turner's and I realized after seeing the Turner that it was finished, but I've been working on it for a while, trying to like create this supreme, you know, Ronald Bladen, whatever sort of perfect structure. Ronald Bladen. It's a name you don't hear oh, often. Oh yeah, well, I although he did have the sculpture, the Big X. That's right. All those those seventies, you know, artists. I, I love all those. Now, did you sand this or scrape it with a knife? Uh, no, I just, I just work with them. You know, I just like develop them. I just they happen and then. And then I go, oh yeah, of course, and they, they tell me. Okay. And then 
They tell you when they're done. Okay. It's about her class and jewelry. The Morocco eclipse. And I said, are you crazy? It's a masterpiece. You hear Ben. Let's look, let's, let's look at this piece. Now you were saying that there was no cosmological diagram that you didn't like? Is that what you said? Something no, like that? I don't think I've ever met one <laughs> Is this a cosmological diagram of some kind? Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> so are there planets? Is that what we're looking at? The orbits of planets? Things like that? I thought it was going to find Not strictly speaking. Okay. Kind of arrangement, you know? Blue planet, maybe, green planet. Little disk, horizon. Little punctuation planets. But you can think of them like little people, too, you know? Like auras. Okay. This is another Ben Pritchard piece we were looking at. Ben said this one was actually smell a vision, so, uh. Yep. Yeah, you can still smell the nice oxidizing linseed oil. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna come in and sort of scan over the back room. Everybody is anxious to get to the after party. It's another one of Ben's pieces. It's easy to remember the name of each artist in the show. Ben. Somebody said it's all about the Benjamins. This is Ben Pritchard. Does this have a title? Don't tell me. Is it called Target? <laughs> Maybe Amazing not. Amazing insight. <laughs> Tom Target Tom. But yeah, my friend Jasper. Okay. And does this piece have a title? What is that one called? It's called, um, is it called Now You Know? It's a more complex one. And again, we've got your uh, favorite color of blue in there. Thanks. Kind of a... Thanks to differ. Yeah. Is that, this is ultramarine? Yeah, that's an ultramarine, yeah. Okay. That you see there. And that's, what, about 16 inches square, something like that? Yeah, 16 by that. 14? Okay, we're going to like... Uh... So actually, they paired this painting with the target paintings on the invitation, which I thought was a nice kind of uh, echoed composition here. Or do you hear this stuff in your head, or does it just kind of come to you spontaneously? Uh, I tell you, I try to just uh, make it kind of a flow of consciousness thing. <laughs> so, there are a couple of smaller time. pieces. We're creating, we're creating documents for time. Right, around. and we're going to just uh, skim over the last couple pieces because everybody wants to get to... What's the name of the place you're going for the after party? Uh, is the spray paint uh, part of the uh, latest layers of stuff that you're working on here? Or has that yeah, been there for a while? Yeah, that, that, that came on later. So you cut this one out of a larger piece and... Uh, Stuck it onto a stretcher. No, it wasn't a larger piece, was it? but I wanted to keep its edges visible, so that's why I mounted it right there. And that's what about 32 by 22, 24, something like that? 36 by 24, something? And we're going to end up looking at this piece by Ben Pritchard. Now, are you using a lot of um, glazing with some kind of resins or? Uh, linseed oil. Just straight linseed oil? No yeah. Damar, none of the other yeah, fancy oh, stuff? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, gentlemen. I'll let you get to the after party. Tell us the name of the show. Do we have a title? The Times Are Circle. The Times Are Circle. For a circle. And the name of the gallery is SFA, SFA Projects. Okay, here on 26th Street. Mm -hmm.
Well, it's James Conley, half house reporter, and we are out here in Williamsburg. We're going to try to run into Soloway, but it's not as simple as it might appear. I've already called this number. We're going to see if the gallerist shows up. Uh, Hakeem showed up. He unlocked the door. We're going to get a little private viewing of work by Lance Rutledge. Well, I uh, got an email from one of my friends, a great artist in his own right. James Clark, also known as James O. Clark. And uh, I think Lance is one of his students. Well, I've been coming by Soloway now for maybe 10 years. I came out to see a Wallace Whitney show about a year and a half ago, but you guys were closed. I had to stick my head through the window. Really? Yeah, this piece is untitled. 2017, oil on canvas. Well, I think Jim knows I have an interest in the idea of text in painting, so maybe that's one of the reasons why I thought Lance's work would be interesting for me. This is also, this is unrealistic. It's also oil on canvas 24 by 24. There's a kind of, uh, what could I say, unskilled, unskilling aspect to the work. Uh, and for someone that spends a lot of time pedaling in the back streets of Brooklyn, you see a lot of uh, hand-painted signs. <laughs> Some of them have been worn out and uh, weathered so much that they've had to repaint the signs. And uh, some of these paintings capture that kind of uh, feeling kind of uh, abjectness. It's titled Living in the Past, 30 by 30. These are my last four dots. Okay, so I guess he ran out. 30 by 19. Okay. The bird of Hieronymus B. Okay, we know what that's an allusion to. Gosh, I got a, the back room as well. Okay. This is titled, This is Not. This is not a slippery slope. This is not a stray dog. This is not a blank key that is not a gunshot wound. This is not a war. Okay, this is oil on canvas, and it looks like maybe he's got some oil stick as well. 37 by 49. Okay, I don't see this one listed in the, the list, but I would imagine it's probably Dear Somebody. Uh, I've been looking at uh, some of Peter Gallo's recent work on Instagram and he's been kind of working with these ideas of pirate ships. This is not a foreign country. This is more of the This Is Not series, I guess. A small price to pay. Okay, this is an interesting installation. We've got a uh, something like a vent that's been covered over with plywood and this painting just seems to fit right on there. I don't want to hear any more about Doreen's herniated disc. I like this piece, it's untitled. 
30 by 40. Kind of makes me think of Don Betchler a little bit. Although, uh, Don has never been one that got into the textual end of things. Okay, we're gonna move through here. This last wall might be a little too congested for individual uh, descriptions and titles. Uh, so these are some of the older pieces. This is under any circumstances. This is 2013. And uh, yeah, I kind of like the the out of register painting over the underdrawing. Ship of Fools. Sodom and Gomorrah, my kind of town. Okay, that is a riff on the Frank Sinatra. This is 2019. Untitled, we'll just slide down the rest of the wall here. Kind of like, uh, there's a sense of a kind of art brute melding with um, street art, maybe. Too many oddballs on another. Okay. Also, I like the fact that uh, Lance uses the black background on some of these, which makes the whole color aspect kind of work in reverse. Okay, we should hang this up in Coney Island. Okay. Joaquin, is that right? Hakim. Hakim. All right, yeah. Hakim, thank, thank you for uh, giving us this little private viewing. Lance Rutledge, here at Soloway. Thanks, we're gonna keep moving on, thank you. Okay, well we're out here at 56 Bogart Street. We're gonna run into the Michael David and Company Gallery. And we're gonna try to catch Daniel John Gadd and talk to him about his show, Animal. Okay, well, we'll take a look at this. This is all new work and uh, it's kind of a uh, departure for Daniel. You wanna come and talk to us a little bit about this? Well, let's start out talking about this piece. This is one of the major pieces. Uh, I think we covered your first show. Is this your second show here? No, it's the third show. It's the third today. show. Okay. So this piece is called Shadow Self. Right? Shadow. Shadow Self. Shadow Self, okay. And it was made um, probably be about the last two months. It's the most recent piece in the show. And this is metal. So we've got copper, You've copper. pipe. Yeah, copper. Um, mainly copper, Oops. other kinds of pipe. <laughs> um, so what is this? What is this clump of stuff here? Is that uh, so? You got burlap and some other things, plaster. And it's actually uh, an old Persian carpet, oh. mirrored glass, plaster and resin. And then the paint is—is uh, is that enamel or is that oil paint that you used to mix, mixed in resin it's, with it? It's—it's uh, it's actually oil paint on top of resin in thin layers. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about the transition from the kind of the more classical flat paintings. They, they were never that flat, but uh, this is actually—it's not freestanding; it's free hanging sculpture. It, you know, it is. It's free hanging basically a mobile and um, I think it was just a natural progression from the wall work because the wall work just kept coming more and more 
off the wall and all these little things in here like the chain the plaster the ropes the copper they all right. started coming into the wall work now is this a piece of ceramic something there or is no, that it's actually plaster that covered is plaster in resin. okay but I, I like it because it gives a ceramic type feel and i mean basically it just started with um a new way to install the work and so i just started hanging the pieces from the ceiling and eventually it just progressed into this. Okay, we're gonna go and look at this one, but I wanna come by and look at some of the smaller pieces on the wall. Now, I was looking at the black on here. Is that something you did with the torch on there? I know that <laughs> Michael uh, does a lot of encaustic work, so he's got these blow torches around. I was wondering if that was kind of something that you burned on there. Is that soot that's the, the black on there? Well, no, is that it something is, else? It's, it's encaustic. Encaustic, okay. On top of it, I poured uh, like a very thin water paint, water black, ah, ah. and it separated like that. So then I, um, you know, just sealed it a few times. Okay, and then you've got your mirror. Let's take a look at this one as well. Do these have titles or are they untitled? Or? Uh, the, the one you picked is untitled. Okay. This one is untitled. Well, I always enjoyed your, uh, your color sense and your palette. Let's look at this one because this also kind of brings up another interesting question, which is um, how do you deal with the, the color and stuff when you're doing more of a sculptural form as opposed to when you're working on a flatter, more like a regular painting I mean, I thing. think a lot of it is, is uh, you know, these pieces are brought together in the studio over months. So a lot of the colors, you know, maybe some of these blues and these purples in, in here right they existed at some point in some other piece. so, so right so you might you might be working on something else and it doesn't work or maybe it ends up going in some direction you never planned on and it ends up getting bound up in something else and uh exactly none of the materials here are found they're all sourced and manipulated by me but they could be found within my own studio you know some of these pieces are years old and finally right. figured okay. out a use and probably after this we'll have another use so there's a lot of recycling going on, but within my own studio, as opposed to outside. Also, the uh, the idea of hanging hanging the sculpture rather than having it on a pedestal or sitting on the floor. What made you come to that decision? Um, it, it was it was loosely based on I was just thinking my first show that you covered was called For yeah. the Moon. Okay, and that was yeah. For my first daughter, and then the second show. Um, you know, just progressed on that. And then the third shot, I was just looking for something different. I wanted to do something other than some traditional show where you walked up painting, painting, painting. So I was thinking about how to, you know, bring the viewer into the space more and bring the work into the space. And um, I was actually installing a, a crib for my daughter who was being born at the time, and I got the idea from that. Okay, this is one of the more I thought interesting pieces because it's not hanging and in a, I mean it's attached to the wall but it's not it's not a wall piece what's the title of this this is called trophy trophy you know I saw this uh, at the opening and I was thinking that I went to a um, Frank Stella exhibition this is probably five or six years ago and he had a bunch of work that he was calling high relief and the joke was that they were basically Frank Stella sculptures but at some point they were kind of bolted to the wall with something like this but I think he was trying to get people to think about how what might be a painting or something like that it all depends on how you kind of categorize things and how much they're attached to the wall how much they're not attached to the wall where does that kind of the line between something dealing with the plane and not dealing with the plane where that is located. And a lot of this is, you're not even painting, a lot of this is just the natural color of the plaster and the various the things. The plaster, various, like, very thin, like, mixed pigments within the plaster, but subtle. Like, this is, um you know, white tint with resin and uh, expanding urethane foam and it just kind of went together. Okay, well, we'll come around and look at this piece here. And this is some of your glass and mirror work. 
Is that somebody got crunched in the parking lot and you swept up the extra glass or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean it is tempered glass, yeah, it's the tempered glass on okay. the mirror. Actually, this is interesting because we've got this kind of magenta piece over here on the wall and there's a couple of, uh, kind of nice echoes here with the color. But I guess you were saying that you're not, you're not really going out of your way to push the color in the sculpture things. It, would you say that because you're more interested in the form that the, um, the I mean, colors are just kind of uh, whatever happens to be happening on the piece? And, I think, I think it is considered, you know, but I, I do think that the form in these became more important. And um, I mean, this piece, for example, is called Bryson the Heron. So it's loosely based on this, this heron that I would see every day running. Huh? There's this big, beautiful white heron. Yeah. Here in Brooklyn? <laughs> no, not here in Brooklyn. Around the pond where I live. <laughs> there are some herons and some ponds. I had some kids who went out to Poly Prep and there was a heron that used to hang out there. Now, is that twine? Is that naturally kind of a little magenta tint, or did you tint that? No, it's, it's dyed. It's a little dyed, okay. It's dyed. And these are some dried residue from the bottom of a bucket? Is that yeah, what those the are? Of the uh, bucket, just one day, I guess I didn't pour it all out. <laughs> Now, have you worked? Have you, have you worked in the construction business and done sheetrocking and plumbing and stuff like that? Is I do, and I can do it all. Okay. So. I know the story. <laughs> so you start to think about materials and uh, pipes and it's plaster and all that stuff in a little different way. Yeah, I mean, you know, from doing plumbing, I discovered this this copper, which you know makes up a lot of um, the various hanging pieces. And the refrigeration coil is easily malleable. You can move it, you can solder it, you can do all these things that allowed me to work quickly. Okay. All right, Daniel John Gad. I think the last time I called you Glad, but <laughs> it's glad to make it be Gad. Uh, and the title of the show is Animal? Yes. Okay, Animal. Thanks for giving us a little update on the work. All right, thank you. Here at Michael David and company you can like this share recommend it to your friends post it at all your social media platforms and you can leave your thoughts ideas comments criticisms and reviews below all we ask is that you say thank you kate oh thank you Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.